just so. It's a field model. Oh, can you give me a quest? Oh, the lead is completely aligned. Let me just remove the packaging. That's the one. Get it for a good cause, so it will be used to, uh, for outreach. Focus now to the end ten turn to the from the end will reach the inf infinity for the focus. Oh did you can just bring it out. Oh, so elegant this is inside it is felt. It's a field model. Oh, that's a broadband version. Oh, clean. Immaculate. Let me shine the flash inside it. Immaculate and clean. Flash shows any any problem if there was. I don't see anything. Just a state horizontal like that. The writing of the coast is beautiful. Okay, let's open this one and see what is inside here. The front lens diaphragm should have been put in a cardboard, but anyway, if we safely here, not open all of them one by one, Let's see what they are. open all of this. So I'm going to open all of this one by one. Okay, the first item is this uh, uh, right angle correct image eyepiece, um, image corrector, erector. So good. Okay, this is the 
random eyepiece. This is an eyepiece. This side is the side that you have to remove. Eyesight and that's the side that goes to the telescope. And this is the eye guard. I think there is a piece on top of this should be here, but I will find it. At the moment, this is here. And that is, they are not a standard eye pieces. They just can be used only with the Questra. If you want a standard, you have to use a <coughs> adapter for that. This is brand on 25 millimeter, 24 millimeter. Okay, this one. What is this one? Oh, that's for the eyepiece. That goes with the eyepiece. Hmm, looks like different adapters probably <coughs> can be used for photography. Okay, now I've uh, installed the dovetail, attached it with a screw that I had to the uh, finder viewer part or stand, whatever it is. Uh, I loosened the brake here so I can turn the tube. That's the really fascinating feature of this telescope. And uh, now I've tipped the barlow away put the eyepiece on the way that's a mirror which brings the eyepiece into the train and uh, I'm not trying to look at those foots there and let's see how it looks just before that I just want to say it's a very cloudy day it's completely dark it's not really anywhere near the night but it's really dark so the image I don't expect to be any bright, but we will see now. So that's the Questar Brandon 24mm eyepiece. Uh, I've not attached any other thing to it, so let's go and see how it looks like. I'll turn off the flash. Brandon eyepiece has a 54 or 52 degrees. I'll focus on the fruit, so the leaves are not exactly under focus, but the wind of course changes the positions. So So that was the view to the quest star. If you ask me which one I prefer, I have Celestron Mac C ninety I have the um, Mead ETX90 and I think that mechanically this is built better, it's smoother, it's easier to operate with it. Those ones are good but uh, for example the focuser in this one is really easy, it's far more better than anything that I've seen with those ones. And is uh, the ease of having actually a barlow here, that really is nice. Also. Uh, the finder really nice mechanically I think this is you cannot fault this uh, Brandon IP is, is good but I uh, see some reflections and some um, I have to try to clean it first and see how it is uh, at the moment it just looks to me like a plus hole it's just not much different unless I test it with the uh, under the moon or some constellations and if 
planets. Now I can tell you, this Brandon reminds me of the uh, tall 25 millimeter process, the Russian tall. Uh, the Russian tall is actually better than this. <laughs> if we, um, unfortunately, it doesn't accept the uh, one and a quarter eyepieces, so I have to get a um, adapter for that. I may not get it even. Uh, Questor is expensive. Okay, I mean, just have a. This is a brief review, just unboxing and just showing you how it is, the view to it. And I will do a thorough review of this later and compare it with the other items, other wax items. Funny enough, uh, Ronald Reagan gave it as a gift one of these telescopes to Mikhail Gorbachev of the Russia, Soviet Union. This is a Soviet design, Maxotov, and the Americans made it and just, it's ridiculous in a way. They just want to say that we have marketed your idea. Oh, it was a way to tell that to uh, your friend, I don't know, it's stolen your idea and just be friend with us. That's strange. But anyway, that's the way of the world. When both these levels are out of the way, practically we are looking through the viewfinder, which is a very wide angle, and you can focus by turning this, and this is the view. This is the view to a viewfinder. Practically like a very wide uh, puzzle, it feels very wide. Magnification is probably lowest around 44 or 6. Yeah, magnification probably around 4 or 6. Nice actually, it's very bright. Although the environment is not that bright, it's dark, quite cloudy and dark. That's the view through the viewfinder. Practically, I'm looking through here. Through this tiny mirror. So, focusing only is done by the turning of this uh, eyepiece itself. And this mirror, the Maxitov mirror, is out of the way. Curved mirror. As you know, Questor, all the Questors, and in this field model, one of them, they don't uh, accept one and a quarter inch eyepieces. The eyepieces of them is actually turn, um, screwed ones, so you have to screw it into the base. So I tried to get an adapter for that, and that adapter I will now be doing unboxing of it. In that way, I will be using to able to use such an eyepiece like this Teleview 24 millimeter Panoptic, your excellent eyepiece, and even a. Uh, some of the larger eyepieces like a uh, uh, Ethos. Let's unbox this. So now I have opened the package. Let's see what is inside. It's called Questar Adapter. It was made by Teleview Visionary, Teleview Company. And that is AQE0005 number of the part. So let's see what is inside. Let's put this uh, packaging away. So 
Let's see what is inside the box. Such a simple part and it seems that many people actually need this. And uh, no more manufacturers like the Chinese one built this one yet. So I think there is a market if they have sold around 10,000, 20,000 of this. Definitely people need the adapter for that. So that's the pusher that the Teleview builds. Installation I use Questor eyepiece adapter AQE triple zero five. So the you have to unscrew the stock thread Questor eyepiece adapter and place it with the Teleview adapter. So let's bring this adapter out and look how it is. Oh, okay. You can see it's such a tiny part and. It has one one screw. I felt that it needs two screws, but there is a space for two, but it just gives you one. Let's see. What I think happened was that Al Nagler uh, has a Questor himself. He wanted, it's made of aluminium by the way, and he wanted to use his own eyepieces with this Questor and he couldn't so he built one He ordered one to be built for him then he thought oh that's an, something probably and many people need this and he ordered it also to be mass-produced for for selling So Nice thing to have The screw should have been actually had a stopper so it will not come out so this has came out now and the plug is a little bit stiff. Let me use both hands to take it out. And the design is not the best. I preferred it had a, a ring, a compressor ring here. It will, this will scratch your eyepiece. Or putting a nylon uh, plastic adapter. But anyway, now this is what we have, so we have to use it. So let me bring the Questor and see how we can do. Just, just take a few too few photographs of it. So this is the Questor eyepiece holder. The eyepiece is from here, from the black side to the top. But the eyepiece holder is this one that I'm unscrewing and it's coming out. It came out and the eyepiece, Brandon eyepiece, which I believe is just nothing more than a uh, something like a fossil, Chinese fossil is better than this. No, I'm using this Teleview to screw it here, and with just this simple modification, I can now use a panoptic. Simple as that. We have now a panoptic on the Questor. And I can put a, let me see if I can put the ethos here. So panoptic 24 millimeter easily goes there. Now let's see if the ethos can stay there. That's much bigger eyepiece. Television is 13 millimeter. Let's just see if I can put it there. Okay, now we are going to see the history being made. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And this Dapsonian mouth is strong enough to hold it in its place. That's a big improvement. Now we have the Ethos 13 on the Questor. <laughs> Amazing. Let's see how it looks. It's quite windy. And that causes the parts which are not in focus just come to the field of view.
Thomas said the view is very sharp when it is in focus. And that was the view through the Teraview Ethers. 13 millimeter eyepiece. I have now the Teleview Panoptic 24 millimeter, and let's see how the view is through that. Yeah, really transformed the view. 30% more field of view than the Brandon 24 millimeter. All the both of them are 24 millimeter. I will use the brand or not, just compare. Okay, that was the view to the Teleview Panoptic 24mm. Now we are on back to the brand on 24mm and let's see how the view looks like. I must say the brand is very finicky, the field of view is narrow, the image is not very contrasty. I'll put the panoptic immediately just to show you how it is. We are looking through the panoptic 24mm. It's very windy and it's not very bright day, so the contrast in none of them was as good as I could see visually. But the camera is a problem, not the eyepiece. So that's beautiful, lovely result. So this is the Celestron C19 Mac, Maxitov, and this is another Maxitov, Questa. They are very similar, this is 89mm, this is 90mm, uh, I mean the aperture size of the mirror. Both of them are in the uh, Skywatch uh, Heritage uh, 100P uh, Dobsonian stand, because you can actually, like any thing, attach anything to each other, dovetail and this, and adjust it can move it up and down, turn it around. It's really good, versatile, and I uh, really enjoy this too. The image quality, I've been, I've been, I'm very happy with this one. I've not tested really extensively on the planets, especially. Uh, it has been cloud, as usual, when you get to new stuff, so clouds will come. But I can say that both of them are good. And uh, I, I think this, I've heard already that they can be out of collimation. I feel it's slightly out of collimation, not much. This is perfect. I could see more many details on the Mars, and you just have to let them go 
uh, sometimes cool down in the temperature, ambient temperature of the surrounding, uh, your observation place, and then that will be perfect for your work. Oh, let me bring the uh, mid X uh, ETX 90. Let's just see how it looks. Compare it with these two. Okay, I have now the Questar, the C19 Celestron, and the mid ETX. Mid ETX is very similar to the field model in the color, at least of the tube. But the function and the usability of it is like a Questar. And even it has, I have three tripods for this that you can actually adjust and this is a duplex because I about this separate from the tube the tube about it separate and about this stand for it and it's installed it on it this is the first uh, uh, series of the quest stars because you can actually move it by this declination and uh, these knobs in the declination and right ascension or practically alt azimuth at this uh, at this stage when you put a tripod you can just it will become an equatorial and it's it's really nice you can use it also automatic of course it has a battery you can, you can follow and this is 390 millimeter except this one which is 89 millimeter one millimeter less and uh, uh, top telescopes all of them are excellent i think if i want to uh, recommend anything for this I would say get a Celestron and get a Scorbacher cheap one, use the Mutapsonia mount of it or any tripod mount that you have. This one is a good value if you can find it, but they're usually 300 pounds on, so you can get it. That one is quite expensive. Even the cheapest field model, if you just get it, is, it's nothing less than 500 pounds if you're lucky. It's more usually around 1,000 pounds or the, with the, all the equipment that this one comes with, if you get that one, that's around 2,000 to 1,500, 3,000. New, around 4,000 or 500, 5,000 pounds, yeah. So, now we have three microsoft of telescopes here. Which one I use more? I didn't have the chance much to use that crystal, but I'm using it because it's a finder scope of it. It's beautiful. I can just change between the finder and the main eyepiece and then I can just borrow it by this and um, really versatile I can turn it around so adjusting for my position of the eye this can be rotating it rotates this whole thing rotates in this one this is a fixed this one also is fixed so the versatility is not there so Value for money, excellent. If you don't, uh, if you want to stand for it and you don't want to buy a Dapsonian mount, this is good if you can find it. Uh, second hand, there are always, but they're, they're not very cheap because people know the value of them. This is just something that uh, you are lucky if you find such a thing. And uh, the thing about this thing is that I talked with the people, uh, experts from Questor, and they told me that these telescopes because they are old now, many of the new ones, people cannot afford the new ones or unless they are very rich. Uh, like us people, working class people who buy these things, uh, they're usually scavenged. That means they have used the different parts, the attached parts and removed parts. So serial number of this, they told me for example, it doesn't relate to this. Uh, this is broadband, but the serial number is for something else. So it's for a standard model. And it has a dew shield. I like that dew shield. For the dew shield was actually falling back when you go to near the horizon. So what I did, I put a, a elastic band here, so you can just slide it there, and it stops the dew shield to move when this is heading up. If I do it like that, the dew shield falls. So when I rise it, I just move it there. This very cheap solution and I owe this to somebody who is a dentist so we owe this to somebody who is a dentist and you can just bring it down and everything will also come down 
And by the way, if it breaks or anything for in cold, you just change that plastic band. Yeah, we have returned back to the normal position. Now I have removed the lens caps and you can see the comparison. What is inside? This is the Questor. What is inside the Celestron C90 Mac? And what is inside a uh, Midi TX90? I feel the coating here is actually more effective. Practically, the coating of the ATX and the Celestron are better than the coating of this. This must be really old. Probably doesn't have much coating left. It has been hot so much. I think the coating of the ETX is better in that sense. You see inside of it is quite dark. You cannot see the that full uh, tube central obstruction light path. So you have two three maxitofs, three different styles, but all in the Usable. I like the cap of this quite heavy metal actually. I like this more because it's very light. The whole telescope in here is very light. And this is the least light one. It was flimsy, it was falling. The telescope itself is superb, but the lead, the cap was falling. So I had to add some the some of this tape, which is the best friend of the uh, DIY users, duct tape. And duct tape made it fit. So it is easier to use it uh, by it, it brings eye comfort when you don't need to poke your the eyepiece as if into your eye to get too close to it. So this is a good eyepiece. It's quite chunky and heavy. And uh, also this is the actual uh, diagonal erect image diagonal. The good thing is that you can use this telescope for viewing the terrestrial or subjects, birds and buildings and from far away things when studying this uh, you know uh, <coughs> things in this uh, sky or the earth and uh, the image will be upright now i'm now going to assemble this and just show you the final assembly okay i've now assembled the mount and the eyepiece and the diagonal and i must say i'm really impressed with the sturdiness and the chunkiness of this and the ease of movement of it uh, I had uh, seen at the other telescopes, Maxitov and other things, I tested them in the shop and I was trying to uh, 
uh, come ac uh, across the ideal telescope. And I found that this one was really best in the way of being chunky and uh, at the same time a uh, ability to manage it without much effort in the dark and carrying it. So now the spot is sco scope, I have to put it, I will do it now. Okay, I must say that I'm really impressed with the ease of assembly of this. It just took me less than five minutes to assemble all this. Now the spotting scope has gone into here. It's a simple dovetail assembly. You just loosen up this screw and then slide the spotting scope. And it has also this bracket. Uh, the bottom but which can go to the mount. I will show you the mount later. I have I have a mount for this proper mount and uh, I'm really impressed with the quality of this. I can't hold it in my you cannot say with many telescopes that but I can hold this ninety millimeter main mirror telescope in, in one hand. Easy. Okay, after many weeks of uh, not seeing the moon because it was so cloudy, now we can see the moon. And I am now in this moonlight testing the Skywatcher, sorry, uh, Celestron C19 Mac and the Questor field version. I exchanged these two eyepieces between them repeatedly 24 millimeter panoptic and uh, again 24 millimeter to eight millimeter olive on zoom. I changed them and uh, what I found my observations is that this telescope has a, a lot of light to scatter in a way halo around the moon. This doesn't have that much. What is is that in this one a little bit image is sharper. This one is sharp but uh, slightly less sharp than this one. It can be one reason, because I first uh, had it out and uh, climatized for around one hour. This was just done now. So I wonder if I just let this climatize again, that will catch up with that. At the moment, both of them are very good. This is slightly sharper. I've tested them on several features on the moon. And I can say that uh, they're very close. Questor has a lot of uh, halo and lighter scatter around it, but the images are slightly sharper. A tad sharper, not much. But the contrast, this one is better. And the C90, Celestron C90, new version, Chinese one. I think the main reason for difference and the lighter scatter in this one is that practically it doesn't have any coating on the meniscus. This one has a very good coating and modern coating. This I bought it from new. This is second hand and when I talked with the requester they told me that the serial number doesn't match with the description so well, it was sold to me as a broadband but the serial number is for a field version. Pyrex no broadband. So that told, I have a suspicion that this is a very old one. Nothing is original. It's just a uh, uh, scavenged from the other telescopes and uh, there is no coating it must be very old at least 40 years old uh, but the serial number says that this was built around 1977 okay both of them now have cooled down and we're in 24 panoptic and nirvana 16 on this and I can see now that they have acclimatized well. Both of them probably are uh, don't have much convection inside the tube of the telescope. And this one is sharper now than this one. This one has a lot of shadow, kind of washed out as if it has fog as if it doesn't fog the you know. The light is scattered, it doesn't have any fog or any blemish on the lens or corrector or eyepiece or mirror or anything. But the image in this one is now sharper after uh, thermal equilibrium. I think it's because of newer coating on this. This one probably doesn't have any coating at all. This one has a fresh coating on the corrector. And that's the difference between these two now.
And observing the Alpon Valley now, I can see Alpon Valley in the part of it is out of the shadow at the Terminator. You can see the mountains of the Taurus Mountains, uh, Caucasian Mountains, sorry. Caucasian and Taurus Mountains, yeah, I can see them. And uh, what I can say is that the convenience of using a Barlow, the position of the focuser, uh, the ability to use the finder by just a level you're going to finder now it goes to the eyepiece or diagonal uh, with this one you don't have that uh, luxury but the image in this one is better he has a fresh new coating this one doesn't have the coating probably at all probably if you buy a new one of this it will be equal or slightly sharper. That's for someone who has both. I don't. So this is a new Celestron C90, and this is the Quest or Field version, 1977 or something around that time. Questor instruction book number two. Questor instruction book number one. Oh, I have that Questor telescope now. I have the instruction for it. Oh, this is a standard version. I have the field version, which is exactly like that, but uh, it's cheaper. And it doesn't have the base, but uh, you can put it on. I'll put it in a Dapsonian mount, I'll show you. Oh, that's the field model. Oh, no, yeah, that's the field model. Yeah, field model. That's the one I have. It doesn't have those uh, star map on it. Yeah, field model. Exactly the same, except that it doesn't have the maps on the body of it. You can buy a duplex uh, mount and put it on that duplex, but uh, I don't need it. Uh, I found that the Dapsonian mount is better. And uh, I have a Sky Watcher 100 and 110, and I use the Dapsonian mount of that for this purpose. Really versatile, better than this. It, this probably costs you 1,000 pounds just that. Oh, okay, I'm going through all this book now. Should I save a few pages? Yeah, that was the uh, book number one. Now we have the book number two, Questor and the Camera. I've never seen that they have two books for this. Didn't know that. So how you attach your camera? That's for the field model that send it by this uh, in this bag case. But the case, the foam of it, if it is old, it's already rotten and damages the optics. So it's better don't have it. Get a case of your own, 10 pound, 20 pound, whatever. And that's for the close distance. I have that ring also. And the camera, how you attach it. I have all these attachments also. And how you can do more than that, this guider the tracker and of course I have now changed the eyepiece holder to teleview adapter so it can take one and a quarter inch eyepieces and yeah nice we can there is a model of it also which has this cluster air effects uh, for taking videos I mean films and here also 
these are just connectors right and you don't need these things if your mobile phone is doing all of that and a little camera will do all of this so we have two booklets I never knew that there is two booklets I always thought there is one the one that I used to see was orange The star instruction books. Uh, my video practically makes it for you as if you own this because you just, just can go through it and see what. <laughs> if you stop the video, probably you can read it. I don't know. I hope. Uh, I mean, these are old things, old publications. Maybe they're available as PDF even online. Who knows? Okay, that's the way my quest star looks, and these are the booklets instruction book one and book two as you can see let me show the Dobsonian mount that I was talking about okay this is the Questar telescope and this is a Dobsonian mount of the um, Skywatcher um, heritage virtuoso uh, is it virtuoso yeah anyway this is the 10 in uh, sorry 4 inch one and uh, yeah I've used a, a tiny um, dovetail bar which came with a telescope and is attached here to the finder area of course this tube can turn now the finder is not there as you can see that orange dot is the finder and the telescope is on this and it's very stable and it can turn I can just you know, turn it up and down of course I can lose it up lose it up and, uh, really better than the uh, I mean any other mount you can install it tripod or something you can use it inside the home on the table or anything you like uh, it will not track but uh, for tracking you uh, you can use the virtuoso a heritage scope watch your heritage virtuoso one that is four and a half inch mount which has the tracking thing and decoding system you can use that one but this is enough for my needs And this Teleview, lovely Teleview adapter, so I can use now one and a half inch, one and a quarter inch eyepieces on this, including, surprise, surprise, Ethers, a 13 millimeter or uh, APM 13 millimeter, and all the Myriad, the Skywatch Myriad, uh, three and a half to, <laughs> to uh, nine millimeter. And I can use all the Pentax eyepieces if they're not two inch. I can use adapter here for two inch, but that will not give me any advantage. And that's it. That's perfect for all the uses that I want. And uh, let me show you my uh, um, Celestron C90 Mac compared with this one. 